Hello there, fellow captains, and welcome back to Dreadnought. So I'm trying a different method of commentary over gameplay here. So instead of doing the commentary while actually, you know, playing the game, I'm doing them separately now, so I can actually concentrate on what I'm doing. Try my best, basically, in game without being distracted. And um, this is a game in the Athos, the Tier Five Jupiter Arms Destroyer, which is probably my favorite, second favorite ship in game. Um, well, I have quite a few favorites. It's every other video I'm, I'm changing what my favorites are. Sometimes it's the Altus, sometimes it's the Silesia, sometimes it's the Jutland, sometimes it's the Trident. It, it changes. There's a lot of good goddamn ships in this game. Most of them just happen to be Jupiter Arms. What can I say? They're just gorgeous. So here we are. I have Missile Repeaters, which uh, were recommended to me, and they are damn sexy. Weapon Breaker, of course, Weapon Booster Pulse, and Energy Generator. So what I'm going to be doing here is just chasing the enemy around the map, trying to be as aggressive as possible, and here we are with Dark Noah. He is an artillery cruiser that will be causing me quite a few problems. I mean, look at him. Look at that rate of fire. Look at that mobility for an artillery cruiser. That is insanity. Oberon really do have really good artillery cruisers. In fact, they don't even really play like artillery cruisers at all. They're, what they remind me of is um, tank killers. You know, tank destroyers from World War II. Although not as mobile. Probably more um, similar to a tank with an actual rotating turret, I suppose. But um, that's that's just the way I see the overall line of um, artillery cruisers as hunter killers, basically. I mean, this enemy team they did have quite a few um, artillery cruisers throughout the fight, which just made it easier to kill them. Seeing how the, they really didn't seem to be paying attention. But I'm just glad you've gotten the game, to be honest. Right, so we're moving in on the enemy here. I believe over that asteroid. You know, because it's made of ice and it's an asteroid, so asteroid. There might be a couple of enemy artillery cruisers. I see, yep, there we go. Look at the radar. The radar ping is bringing up two enemy uh, artillery cruisers. And that's Callisto Dark. I'm not sure if that's a bot. You see, I've been told that enemies that have a, a forename and a surname are bots, most uh, mostly. And you do come to recognize a lot of the names on Scrambled. That's not good. I don't like my eggs scrambled. I like them boiled. And we're about to boil this fella. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Awesome. Now, the second game I have coming up is very special. Right, we need to take out these two artillery cruisers. Just thinking Willis there because he's been healing me quite a bit so far. And he will be remaining with me for quite a while. It's always nice when you do have a pocket healer with you. And um, we're now engaging the artillery cruisers. Gilbert there taking out any ordnance fire at him. But he's down anyway. There's Pineapple. He is going to go the way of the dodo. He's stuck between a rock and a corner. And it ain't going to end up very nice for him at all. And he's down. That's two artillery cruisers down. But we are being fired at by Dark Noah again. He has just continually harassed us so far, and he's doing a very good job. I mean, if I wasn't uh, as alert as I was in this game, I would have been wiped out. So our team all are moving over to where the enemy spawned originally, so we are grouping back up. That's the best way to play. Group up with your team and move accordingly. Work together. There's Callisto again. His main aim has been to ram and just destroy whatever he can on our side. So I'm going to go and see if I can intercept him. Although we already do have a destroyer, an allied destroyer, focusing on him. So let's just make it over this structure and go down over this asteroid. Let's see if he's still standing. He is. Oh, just barely though. Okay, let's take him out. Mm, didn't even get an assist there. But there's Dispatch, and we're definitely going to attempt to Dispatch him. But he is with a couple of buds. He's got a... A Kula Vector uh, Dreadnought there, as well as an Oberon Destroyer. And we are taking a bit of damage here. But again, we've got a healer with us, keeping us alive. This was a stupid move I made. I moved in way too fast. Wasn't paying attention. And it just so happens that my team were reacting and did come to back me up. So although I screwed up, that's the power of teamwork. The power of friendship. If you screw up, they'll back you up. Or they should at least if your friends don't back you up. Mm, they're not friends, they're assholes. Okay, let's get our energy back. 
Oh, and there's Dark Noah again. Can't. Oh no, there's Dark Noah. Okay, so we'll have two artillery cruisers that are, well, being a bit of a pain in the ass. So let's move towards Dark Noah. See if we can punch him. Just knock him out of this fight. And he's gone. Or he, oh, he's almost gone at least. He took out our ally, so well played to the Dark Noah there. But we got him. That was just the odds were against him there. And we still have our little pocket healer, which is awesome. There's Battlestar. He's down as well. Didn't even get to make us jump. And there's Callisto again in his Oberon Destroyer. Things are about to get interesting with him. At this point in the game, I was like, oh, Callisto, I, I keep almost getting him, but I don't make it. He's too fast. Oh, there's Dark Noah as well. He's getting back into the fight pretty quickly. And the blood haze descends. I see Callisto Dark. And I have to go after him. <laughs> I just go blind, kill blind. And try to take him out. Screw my allies, screw the enemy team. I'm getting him. But he's a lot faster than I am. I mean, I have to put power in the engines just to be able to keep up with him. And with his ducking, diving, and dipping, and dodging, or whatever you call it, he's uh, avoiding my kill shots. I mean, I haven't really done much damage to him. Nope. I don't think we're going to get him. Look at that, using his ram as a, an escape measure to get out of this fight pretty damn fast. And it's working for him. I mean, look, we're 96 to 36, so one more kill will do it. And I think he actually gets away with it. I mean, I'm getting close. Uh, we were close there, but no potato. But that was a good fight. I enjoyed that. Haven't played, uh, what is it, Dreadnought in about a week or so. But I enjoyed... This game and the next one quite a bit. I mean, it didn't come top there. It came second, but still, it's not always about uh, coming in the top three. Sometimes it's just about the fun of the fight. Look at that. Got one kill and it was the best of the match. <laughs> I mean, he got five kills. Oh, look at TMC Pot. Wait, he was in a, a tactical and he got eight kills. Applause for him. Well played, but now we're jumping in the big spoon. It's time for the king to come back, or I should have said the return of the king 2.0. So with the monarch, I'll be going with the default loadout of nukes, nukes, and more nukes. Because how do you get a little turtle out of a shell? By just throwing nuclear warheads at it. And that is what's about to happen in this game here. I kind of got a little bit annoyed in this because, uh, well, those of you that play Dreadnought, you know that uh, sometimes your allies or the enemy team have a tendency to, uh, well, let's just say, not do anything. Sit in the same position on top of the MVP, uh, that would be the command ship, and just not move. And still the enemy team are able to take out the command ship because there's no agency on your team at all. So here we are. So the object of this game mode is, if you haven't played this uh, game before, that big command ship there on the left, with the um, green shield icon, we protect it. If we don't, oh no, what the, f there's an Akula Vector Corvette right on us, look at that, look at them, what is going on with, I've never seen an Akula Vector Corvette that maneuverable before, <laughs> but we got him anyway. <laughs> that was, uh, honestly, whenever he jumped in, that was a big surprise to me. I was like, hold on, wait, the game's only started and he's already here. What what, what the fuck? But there's also um, some nice changes for the Monarch. And I believe it might just be for um, Dreadnoughts in general. You know your main battery guns? How they're complete garbage? And to be able to do anything with a Dreadnought, you'd have to use the repeaters. At least for the Jupiter Arms line, the Monarch. Well, they buffed the main battery guns. <laughs> which is awesome. Because I do like them visually, they look cool, I mean, the the explosions or just the plumes of smoke exiting the barrels upon you know, firing. As well as just the sound effect, feels punchy and, and powerful as well. So, you don't really have to rely on repeaters anymore. I mean, they're still nice as a secondary, but honestly, in this game, you'll see that the main batteries are doing quite a lot of more, uh, quite, quite a lot more damage. Which has always been my complaint, and it's been like that for two years at this point, I think, and it's only now they're getting to change it. It just goes to show how drastic and like, bad things are currently 
over at Jaeger, which is unfortunate because they've made a really, really awesome game. It really just needed ironing out, and it really needed that goddamn single player campaign that they were promising. You know, I've been thinking lately um, about a couple of things. You know, why does Destiny 2 remain so successful, yet it has many, many downsides, many pitfalls in the game? Um, why did Anthem feel so spectacularly? And um, over the past couple of days, I've been playing more Anthem. I just, I'm not really enjoying it. But I, I want to. I do like the third person aspect. I do like the maneuverability of the gameplay. Uh, and that's about it. The world is not memorable, neither of the characters. I mean, the whole battle suit design is pretty awesome, but apart from that, it's not really much, uh, much else going for it. I mean, the world of Destiny, the Lost City, the Fallen, the Tower, the different factions of the Guardians, it's all interesting, even though you get very little lower in Destiny 2. The world is interesting. But anyway, back to the game. So at this point, we are all gathering up behind this Mesa. Mesa is, I believe, some sort of platform mountain. I... I I don't know the actual description, you'll have to go to a dictionary for that. But I'm noticing that uh, that I just got rammed. <laughs> but he's about to die. You don't ram a dreadnought. At least of all a fucking monarch. What are you doing? It'll just level itself out again, look at you, and kill you. Simple as that. So I've noticed that we're just going to be clustering here with a turtle formation, and I cannot stand that. I mean, I'm in a dreadnought. I'm the heavy. I'm meant to be pushing the line and just being the target for the enemy so my team can advance. That's not the way this game goes, so I decided that I will flank around here, around the side of this Mesa, 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 Mesa Jaja Binks! Don't know where that came from, but I'm going to maneuver around this here and see if I can't get a few cheeky hits. So I used a nuke there and I took out an artillery cruiser, which is nice. It's always nice when your nukes land and just get an instant kill. Now the enemy command ship is quite close to where I am, but you can see there a uh, Krishnik. I'll just call the... Um, Akuda Vector Tacticals Krishnik because that's the most memorable name I have for them. So there's a Krishnik healing another monarch, or is that a Jutland? I don't know what tier it is. But regardless, he's being healed while our team are laying into him. But I want to get a little bit further in. Now this Corvette, he's going to attempt to kill me. Won't work, obviously, I'm a, I'm a monarch. The king does not fall to mere peasants and jesters. The king stands tall. And then he launches nukes. I mean, look at this. I mean, neither of us, neither of us are really doing much in the, in the way of damage to each other. But, you know, it's, it's the attempt that matters. And I was thinking, you know what? I'm just going to launch a nuclear warhead here. If it lands on me, that's fine. I'll just throw power into shields. But it will 100% kill him if he's still around here. And just like the guy in the previous game, uh, in the overall destroyer that got away, look at how close I am to killing him. And he gets away. Now, vultures are on him, but the vultures aren't fast enough to catch up to a speedy little Jupiter Arms Corvette. And there is Devil Baby. Here comes a bit of a problem, or remains a bit of a problem anyway through this game. He's just on point with his heels every every time you see him. And he's the main detriment to me, at least, in trying to push around this corner. If you look at the mini-map at the top right, the red arc, you'll see that my team is all clustered up together. Don't understand why, to be honest. Well, I do understand why. It's just the way people play in this. Uh, whereas I, I'm trying to get them to work together. Maybe regroup and push around here. The enemy command ship is right there. We're losing 90, er, 165 to 96. So it's not going well at all. Complete opposite of the previous game. But there's Devil Baby. So I'm trying to take him out so we can no longer support that command ship. But, watch this. An allied dreadnought gets right in front of me. Blocks my shots. I will be taking down Devil Baby here, I believe, if I remember right. Just switching to the repeaters there. But now I'm firing at my hot coal. Another tactical on the enemy team. And the same dreadnought continues to get in my way. So I took myself a long trip around here to try and get into a decent position to flank. And now my team becomes brave all of a sudden. Whenever there's no enemy to face, people become brave very quickly. Or whenever there's no risk uh, to self-harm, I suppose, as well. Alright, let's get this command ship down. I mean, the enemy, I believe, may have already taken down two of ours, so... We're a little bit closer. We're, 100, we're 168 to there, 189, or 191 at this point. There's Dark Noah again. 
You'll remember him from the previous game, only he is now in the Jupiter Arms line of Artillery Cruiser instead of the Oberon. Water base again in his little Corvette. He's going to take out our ally, but our ally is not going down without a fight. And there we go. Okay, uh, nuclear warhead detonated on our location. Let's try and push forward now. I do need energy to regen first. That would be most useful. On Callisto. And there's Devil BB again. You'll notice there's Callisto, uh, sorry, not uh, Callisto, Devil Baby and my hot cold there, two tacticals, just making us a healing uh, mosh pit. It's a bit disgusting if you ask me. My hatred for tacticals and just healers in general has lessened over the years, but it's still a goddamn there. What do you expect? Okay, let's make our way in. A little warp here, just to get ourselves a little bit closer to our overall target. And yeah, it's going to take a while, so let's launch a nuke there. See if we can do some damage to that tactical. And while we're doing that, we'll look and see what else is available. Okay, so... Vulture's out on that enemy dreadnought to the right. And we'll move in on Pineapple here. The enemy sniper or artillery cruiser. Another jump. At this point, I realize, hold on, our command ship's over there on its own. We, oh, and Morbius is just having a field day, just taking him out without no challenge whatsoever. And that's when we lost the game. You win some, like the first battle, but you lose some as well. Still a fun battle overall. And it's always fun to play the king. So that is it guys, that is Dreadnought. I really wanted to get a Monarch game out there because god damn it it's a Monarch. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying whatever the hell it is you're playing. And I of course like always, we'll see you next time. Buongiorno.